Hey friends, what's up? Welcome back to Babylon Talmud. Today we're studying Davav, Dav 6 of Sechta Mayid Cotton. Who could tell me what Davav talks about? So we continue talking about um, graves, like making uh, markers for graves. And then we get back into like Beis uh, HaShloch and Beis HaBal, that discussion. Um, and then we end off on sort of an interesting note. So I'll leave you, give you something to be excited about. Um, all right. Well, we're going to start on Davav Omer Aleph, two, four lines into the page. Rabbi Huda Omer, Ua, says Rabbi Huda, Ah, so Rabbi Suha pointed out that I say Ua uh, when I, uh, uh, yeah. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. Ooh, wow. Yeah, it's fun. It's nice. Rebuda, oh man, says Rebuda. It's exciting to see another line of, of Gemara. I don't know. Rebuda, oh man, says Rebuda. Ad she'esham zokin, oh, tamad l'fishayin, hako b'kim badover. All right. So Rebuda had said yesterday that when it comes to a field that, um, you know, you're not sure if a if a, a corpse was lost in there or maybe it was plowed in there. So you can't just make a decision based on the existence of trees. You actually have to ask a zokin or a talmud. Because not everybody necessarily knows what's the deal over there. Uh, therefore, you have to ask somebody who knows. Omer Abayi says, Abayi Shmamino. So what do we see from there? Tzur b'meir uh, a Torah student, Teika Bimasa, who's in Bimata, who's in a city, Komile Demato Ali Ramya. So, so all of the things in the, in the, in the place are dependent on this person, right? You have a fellow who kind of knows what's up, so it's a lot of responsibility. All right, fine. What do you think's with the cough? You think it's gonna go away? You stomach, right? But it's just been kind of lingering for like a few days. Cough and like shtickle runny nose. Cough and shtickle runny nose. Like, uh, like every day I just assume it'll be gone, but it's like not. Let's go right there. Amr Vyuda, ua, so says of Vyuda. Matzah evin mitsuyenes tachte atome. Okay, so if you find a stone and the stone has like, I don't know, plaster on it. I don't know, it's got some kind of a sign on it that there's a corpse buried underneath it. So, so underneath the stone is going to be a tummy because there's a, the, the, somebody who's buried there. Shtaim. So now what if you have two of these stones? Okay, with some space in between. So, well, if between the two stones there's plaster, so then the whole, there, there, there's a body under the entire thing. So everything is tummy. Vim ain sid benen. But if there's no plaster between the stones, so you have a stone here, a stone there, nothing in between. So then benen tahor. So then in between the stones is uh, pure, is tahor. All right. Vafagav deleka chorish. And even though it wasn't plowed there or anything like that, so maybe you be cons- you should be concerned. Like why is why is it not plowed? Why they're leaving it alone? Maybe there's a dead body there. No, nonetheless, um, if there is just kind of like open space between the two stones, you can assume that it is pure, that there is no body buried there. But one second, we have a b'risa. If you find one stone that is like, that there's an indication that there's a body buried there, so so underneath it is tummy. But if there are two stones, so if the area between the stones has been plowed, so then the area, so then it's tahor. You can assume that there's no body there. Vim lav, but if it's not plowed, bene in tome. So then in between the stones is tummy. So on the one end we're saying that in, that in between the stones is tahor. On the other end we're saying in between the stones is tame. Oh, friends. Shtiko mess, right? So I'm a puppet. This is a puppet. Ocho, kishea, sid, shofuch, so here what we're talking about is you have two stones and there's like lime or plaster or something poured on top of the stones. And it somehow then, I guess, covered the space in between Oichit. So, So, 
So if the area between the two stones was plowed, so then you can assume that it's tahor because that plaster that's there is just somehow, I don't know, connected to the fact that the area is being plowed. All right. Um, that it got kind of like uh, folded up there, placed there. But if there's not, if the area between the stones is not plowed, and all there is is like this plaster that kind of is in the area between the two stones, so then you have to assume that why is there plaster there? Because there's a body buried there. But if the area in between is um, is uh, plowed, so then you can assume that there's no body there. And whatever plaster there is there is just kind of happened through the plowing or something. But uh, there's no body there. All right. Um, Rabasi. Now listen to what Rabasi says. Motso meitzer echod mitsuyin. So if you have a field. <coughs> and and if you have a field. <coughs> What's going on here? Why do you think I'm coughing? One second. I'm going to cough off mic. All right, I'm back from my cough. So, if you have a field, ooh, but now I can blow my nose. One second, one second. Okay, I'm back from blowing my nose. Um, so let's see, what else could I do? <coughs> cough again. All right, I could cough again, then blow my nose again. We can just keep on doing this. Amr Basi says, Basi Motso, Meitzer Echon Metsuyin. So if you have a field, the field has four sides to it. Okay. Now, let's say there is like no like official fences or anything like that you have just like an open field but to delineate the field there's an area of the land that's kind of like almost like a furrow or a ridge or something that's elevated and that kind of delineates the area right so the so around the field surrounding the field on four sides there's like an elevated area and if this area so this mates are this like border on one side right if he finds that there's like um, one side of the field is like covered in plaster or whatever. So who taught me v'chol So then you can, so then you have to assume that underneath that uh, ridge is um, there's a, a, a mace, a, a body buried. So it's uh, tummy, but the rest of the field is tar because the the tumah is under the furrow. Shnayim heim tmein v'chol asadikulatahora. If you have two such furrows, so two borders of the field that are elevated with plaster, so then underneath those two um, uh, borders is tummy, but the rest of the field is tahor. Shlosha heim tmein v'chol asadikulatahora. If you have three uh, of these borders that are covered in plaster, so then underneath them is tummy, but the rest of the field is tahor. I bought, but if all four of the borders of the field are covered in plaster. Hain Torin, they are Tahor, Bacholas of the Kula Tmea, but the rest of the field is Tommy. Because in that case what you're doing is you're you you are you are indicating that the entire field is Tame and stay out and 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 but the but the borders itself are just borders, right, in this particular case where or where all four borders are covered in plaster. So in this case, the borders actually would, would not be the tummy part. The tummy, the, 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 the point is that inside is the tummy part. To as we said, in Machikin Siun, Mimakum Tuma, Sholahafsid, as Eretz Yisro. And therefore, since we don't want to keep the markers too far away from the Tuma, you can assume that right inside the marker is, um, is Tame. Um, the right inside the marker is where the tumma starts, i.e. the entire field is tummy. It's not just like the inner part of the field that's tummy. Now the Mishnah had said, that the, the people can go out even to check up on the uh, kilaim, on the forbidden mixtures that may be planted in the fields. They can go out on to, 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 to you know to have a look and you know see, see if they find any kilaim violations. Fact the Gemara, but one second, is Cholamoid really the time to go out and do these inspections? Vira Minu, we have a question. Bechod Ba'adr, on the first, right, so it was a mission in Shkolem, right? Bechod Ba'adr, on the first of Adr, Mashmin Ala Shkolem. So we let the people know, like, hey, people, get your Shkolem ready because, you know, you're going to have to, you can have to donate them by the first of Nisan. Valakilayim. And they say, hey, people, um, don't have kilayim in your fields. All right. Bachemisho Osirbo, on the 15th of Adr, Korin Megillah Okay, obviously, on the 15th of Adr, we read the Megillah 
in the walled city, Shushan Purim. Viotzen the Kavitz Es and they go out uh, to remove the thorns from the roads, or the Sakin or Chovus, to fix the roads, Velomud and Mikvos, and to measure the Mikvis, Veosin Koltzorke Rab, and they do all these public uh, needs, Umitsanin Es Akvaris, and they also um, you know, put signs up, uh, markers on the, on the graves, Viotzin Ala Kilaim, and they go out for the Kilaim, right, to check up on the Kilaim on the 15th of Adar. So on the one end, we're saying that they go and check up on the Kilaim on Cholomoid uh, Pesach, which is a month later, and yet we have this price that's saying that they check up on the Kilaim on the 15th of Adar. So is it the 15th of Adar or is it the 15th of Nisan? Not exactly the 15th of Nisan, but like 16th, 17th, whatever it is. Kilu, is it mid Adar or mid Nisan? So what do we do? So it depends. If it's crops that uh, are, uh, you know, growing earlier, they're earlier crops, so then you go out in other. The later crops, you go out in Nisa. All right. The other, the other way to break down this discrepancy is, kan bizoim kan biyurakis. It depends. Are we talking about, like, you know, seeds, fruits that are uh, ripe earlier? Or are we talking about vegetables that become ripe later? So that is why we have two points where we go out to inspect on the kilayim. You know, depending on on uh, on uh, what 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 needs to be inspected at that time, there are earlier things for other and later things for Nisan. Amr Reb Asi Amr Biochanim. Ua. So says Reb Asi in the name of Reb Yochanan Loshanu Ella Shein Nitzon Nikr. So now this is only when the sprouts are not recognizable, right? Kilo, we say we wait until. Uh, the 15th of Adar or, 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 or Cholomoid Pesach, if before then the uh, sprouts were not recognizable. Avo, however, needs a nicker. If the sprouts are recognizable already from beforehand, Yotz and Alain, you can go out and check up on them, then even beforehand. Maishna Bukhulo Shel Moed Dinafkina. Now, Trek Gemara, how come Davka were saying that Cholomoid they go out to check on the Kalaim? Why specifically? Cholamoid. So Amr Yaakov, Amr Biochan, Mishum Sachar Puula de Muzale Gabon. It's because the um, the 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 um, uh, payment, right? The amount that you have to pay the right, right, the, right, the amount you have to pay the inspectors is going to be um, is going to be less expensive on on um, is going to be less expensive. On Cholamoid. As Rashi says, that since the people are not uh, busy doing other things on Cholamoid, they're going to be more available at a more favorable price to check up on the Kilaim on Cholamoid. Omri of Zvid, Vitemir of Mesharsha, Ua, so says of Zvid, Samtakaser of Mesharsha, Shmamina, oh, so we learn from here, Ki Yadvina Lu Sachar, Michuma Salishka, Yavinanu. That who, how are we paying these, uh, Kilayim checkers? We're paying them with the donations to the, uh, with, with donations to the temple. And because we're paying with them with donations from the temple with public funds, so, you know, we don't want to, to, to just <coughs> waste <coughs> pu- <coughs> public <coughs> money. <coughs> wow, a lot of coughing. What's going on over here? They don't, what's the right word? Not, not re- squander maybe. They don't want to squander public funds. So therefore, you know, we wait for Cholomoy at a time when people are, 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 are not charging as much because they have more time available. Because if we're saying that the, that the field owners have to pay the inspectors. So who cares if it's Cholomoy, not Cholomoy, Kilu, if, if the owners of the field are the ones paying, so let them pay whenever they want. But because we're using public funds, from the base of Mikdash, from the donations. So therefore, we want to, we don't want to squander any of the money and therefore we wait for Cholomoid when it will be less expensive and they can check the uh, Kilaim then. I think people are making a lot of noise outside, but I can't really tell. Bad Kama. All right. So how much Kilaim do you have to, right? How much Kilaim has to be there, right? This mixture of like forbidden seeds, like grapes and, and, and wheat seeds, for example, being Planted together, that's not allowed. So, how much does it have to be for it to be a problem? So, Amr of Shmuel by Yitzchok, Kosa Shashaninus. It says of Shmuel by Yitzchok, it's like we taught, Kosa Sheyeshba 
rova zera mimin acher any saw that has a a a a a a, 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 a quarter of a kav of a, of a different species. So then um, you might you have to right. So then they get rid of it and they. Then they they reduce the amount of this mixture that's there because we don't want you to have it. Fact the Gemara, but what do you mean that we reduce it? But I thought that we learn in a bray. Says Kinnush Yumafkirin Kol Asada Kula. Friends, do you remember this from Masech Tashkalim <laughs> that they decided that what they do is they make the entire field hefker ownerless. So Lokasha Khan called him Takana Khan Nacha Takana. So it depends if it was before the decree or not. Friends, what does this mean? Let's go by to for a minute. So the Tanya, as we learn in the Brisa, maybe you remember this from the Sech Tashkalim. Barishona, you okrin umashlichin lefnei behemton. So first, the, the, the sort of enforcers, I guess, right, the people who would check up on the kilayim, they would uproot the kilayim and throw it in front of the, the people's animals. Barilabale batm smechin, shte smachos, smachos, smachos. I don't know. So, and then the, the homeowners were like double scoring, right? Not only was somebody willing to uproot their kilayim for them, they're also willing to like put it in front of their animals so that they're going to feed. They just sit back drinking pina coladas. So, and one that somebody else is weeding their fields for them. And, they're, and, and not only are they weeding their fields, they're then throwing it in front of their animals. Mamish just, you know, the homeowners just sit there and drink pina coladas. So they tweaked the process and they said, you know what, the, the, the people are coming to check, they'll uproot the kilayim and throw them on the road, throw them on the street so that then, you know, at least the homeowners aren't benefiting in that uh, sense. So, but still the homeowners were very happy. Because these people are coming and weeding their fields for them. So then they, um, so then they tweaked the gezera that, um, that what, if you had kilayim in your field, they would just make the whole field ownerless and you'd basically lose it. So, so, um, so when we say that the inspectors would minimize the amount of kilaim that was there, that was before the decree that they said, you know, that uh, due to the fact that the homeowners were benefiting from the work of the inspectors, so they actually said, if you have kilaim in your field, we're just going to make it ownerless. And uh, that's, that's, you know, you wouldn't want your field to become ownerless. So you would take care of the kilaim on your own. Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov Omer, so now we get to a new Mishnah. This is a Mishnah that we already saw on the Beis of Aleph. It says over there, Zubin Yaakov, Moshkin is Hamayim Me'ilon Le'ilon, that you can draw, right, if you have like one tree and there's like water under it, under it, and then there's another tree and there isn't water under it, so you can like draw, you know, extend the water from one tree to the other. Uvavad Shilo Yashka is called Hasod, but if you have a Beis Ha'ba'al, a, 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 a um, field that does not require irrigation, so then do not water that field. If you have seeds that you didn't, um, you know, you didn't give them, you didn't irrigate them before the moed, that you didn't need to irrigate them before the moed, you didn't irrigate them before the moed. Do not, um, do not, do not give them to drink um, on, on chala moed. Right, these are, these are, these are plants that you weren't seed, uh, pl- uh, watering before them, before the festival, so don't start on the festival. Whereas the Chachamim allow you, um, that you're allowed to, um, uh, irrigate even a, uh, base a, a, a field that does not require irrigation, and also you're allowed to irrigate seeds that, um, you know, plants that were not watered before the festival. And Rashi points out that these rabbis are Reb Meir, right? We saw in that base that Reb Meir's opinion is that you can even irrigate a base ha baal. All right, that sounds nice. Says the Gemara Amr of Yehuda. Says of Yehuda, "Im haisa sade mitunenes muter." That you know, Reb Lezer ben Yaakov said that if you have a base ha baal, right, a a a a a field that you do not irrigate, <laughs> so um, Reb Lezer ben Yaakov says, right, a, a field that does not require irrigation, so then you're not allowed to. Um, 
then you're not allowed to irrigate it on Cholamoid. But says of Yudah, it Sodom If it was a field that was naturally moist, but then it dried out. So you didn't water it beforehand because, um, you didn't water it beforehand because, um, but because, um, it was moist. But now it dried out. So then you'd be mutter. You'd be allowed to irrigate it. Tanya Amiyach, we also learned in a brace like this. Kishamu Osul Ashkosun Bamoid, that when they said, that you're not allowed to um, to to water the field on cholamoid. Lo amu ella bizoim shiloshasum lifne amoid. That's only seeds that did not drink before the festival of alzoim shashasu lifne amoid. But if you have uh, seeds that did drink before the festival, right, were irrigated before the festival, motul ashkosum b'moid, then you're allowed to uh, irrigate them on the festival on cholamoid. V'maisa sodim etunenes motur. And if it was a field that was moist, but then got dried out, you'd be allowed to water it to prevent any damage. Vein mashkin saw the grid bamoid. And you're not allowed to irrigate a dried out field. Meaning if you have a field that's just, it's a dry field. It's not, not, not like a moist one that got dried out. It's just a naturally dried out. It's a dry field. So do not uh, irrigate it on cholamoid. Machom matirim boze uvaze. And the rabbis permit both this, um, both this um, field, this dried out field, as well as um, seeds that were not uh, irrigated before um, the festival. All right. Um, Ravina says, Ravina, Shmamina, what do we see from here? Tarbitza. If you have like a garden, Shari le Tarbutse, Bechul de Moada, you'd be allowed to um, sort of irrigate it with, uh, you know, provide some water for it on Cholamoid. Um, okay, fine. And Ravina explains his rationale. He says, um, because they grid my time, how come by a dried field, the Chachamim say that uh, you're allowed to irrigate it, right? As they said, that the rabbis allowed you to irrigate a dry field. So my time, how come? Well, because what are you doing? You're basically taking this field, Again, this isn't like a dried out field that's going to be ruined. It's just, a, I guess, a naturally more dry field and it takes longer for things to grow. And by irrigating it, you're going to make it grow faster. And the rabbis seem to be saying that that's okay. Hachonami, you're also by your garden. You know, by, by sprinkling some water on it, on cholamoid also, what would have taken a little bit longer to grow will now grow a bit faster. And that seems to be acceptable according to the rabbis. The rabbis taught, my beats and they love on bashvis. You're allowed to like sprinkle water on a um, on, on a on a wheat field during shemitah. Avalo b'moed, but don't do that on chol amoed. But we learn in the brayse my beats in bein b'moed bein b'shvius. But we have a brayse that says that you're allowed to sprinkle water on the field um, both on chol amoed as well as shvius. So Amr Rufuna says Rufuna lo kasha or blesu ben Yaakov or Rabbanu. So it says Rufuna. Well, it depends. It is the opinion of. Rabbi Leizer ben Yaakov versus the rabbis. Right? Rabbi Leizer ben Yaakov says that we don't want you to be um, watering a beisabal on cholamoid, whereas the chacham say you are allowed to. All right, fine. Tanidach, we learn another brayso. Our beitzins they love on erev shvius kadeshi yetsu yurakos bashvius that you're allowed to um, sprinkle water onto a wheat field on um, the year before, on the sixth year of the Shemitah cycle, Kadesh Yetzu, Yerakos Bashvius, so that vegetables will emerge on Shemitah. Velo od, not only that, Elish Marbit, since they love Bashvius, Kadesh Yetzu, Yerakos Mutsoy Shvius. You're also allowed to apply water to a field on um, Shemitah so that there will be vegetables um, the year after Shemitah. But you wouldn't be allowed to apply water to the field on Shemitah for Shemitah. All right. Says, the new Mishnah Tzadon is Ishus. You're allowed to um, hunt, you're allowed to trap Ishus. The Gemara is going to explain what Ishus are. Vesach Barim and mice. Misdea Ilon, Misdea Lovon, from a um, orchard and from a wheat field, a uh, grain field. Kidarko Bamoid in the normal mar- manner on Cholmoid, Uvashvis, and on Shemitah. You're allowed to uh, trap these animals both on Cholmoid and on Shemitah. That by a orchard you can trap these animals in sort of the normal fashion, whereas um, in a uh, wheat field then you can trap these animals but not in the normal 
fashion. If you have a fence surrounding a field that you need to um, fix, that it got breached and you have to fix it, so you can uh, fix it on Cholamod Vashvius and on Shmita Bone Kedarko, you can just build the um, you can just build a fence on Shmita, it's no problem. Nobody's gonna think that it's you know you're doing it as like part of working your field. My issues, Fakti Gemara, what are these issues, right? We said that you're allowed to trap these issues. What are these issues? Amr of Yehuda, so it says of Yehuda, Birya It's a creature that doesn't have any eyes. That's what an issues is. Amr of Bar Shmua Bar Yishmal, the Itema, Rav Yema Bar Shlamya, Micro. Oh, so where do we have a pasuk that talks about this uh, animal that doesn't have any eyes and it's called an issues? So as the pasuk says, where's this pasuk? The pasuk is in Tilim. Kmoshablu temes yalech, like a, I wrote this down, like a snail melts away as it goes. Nefel ashes, bal chazushemesh, is like a, um, a, an ashes animal that doesn't see um, any sun. So I guess that these ashes animals, they don't see, they don't have eyes. Alright. Turn around, I was taught suddenly, say ashes vs achbar mistea lovun. You're allowed to trap these um, Ishus animals and these Ishus creatures and mice from a um, wheat, from a grain field, and from a, a orchard in its regular manner. And you can also destroy uh, like ant farms, like holes where there are ants. Kate said, Machriven, how do you destroy a hole where there are ants? What you do is you find two ant holes and you take the dirt from one ant hole and you swap it into the other ant hole and it creates a mess. And they all just, I don't know, like choke to death. Yeah. Now this is as long as um, they are um, on two sides of the river that basically if you take this dirt from you know from the different holes and you mix them together so then it creates a mess if the if the you know two holes are like kind of far away right that they're on two different sides of the river Fudeleka Gishra and there's no bridge between the river Fudeleka Gimla and there's no plank Fudeleka Mitzra and there's no rope Ad Kama Ad Parsa um, and you know these these they have to be a parsa away. All right, fine. What do you want me to tell you? They have to be a parsa away. If they're closer than a parsa, so then I guess they'll be too familiar with the uh, dirt, and um, it won't like kill them or whatever. All right. Well, that was daf uh, vav of mesechta moed kain. So the first part of the daf, we would continue talking about these like uh, graves, and we said that if you have like a stone with like plaster on it so then that's like a marker for a grave so underneath it is tummy but if there's like two stones and there's no markers in between so we had two opinions right one of them is that well if it's plowed the area in between so then you can assume that there's no grave there but if it's not plowed so then it depends it's like if there's like a thin layer of like plaster because they poured it over like the two sides or whatever so if it's not plowed so then you have to assume that it's like uh, there's a body buried there but if it is plowed then you can assume that um there's no body um buried there all right and we talked about uh, the inspectors going out to inspect the fields right we said that um so our mission said that that, that they do that on holomoid and um, but we have the right a bryce that says that they would do it in the middle of other so essentially we saw machlokas between um reb chanin reb yosu reb chanin and reb Lazar, that maybe it's talking about the uh, early crops versus the later crops or maybe it's talking about, um, you know, uh, fruits versus vegetables. But okay. And then we um, mentioned a, a brysa that we had learned about Masech Tashkalim that um, initially they would, you know, the inspectors would come and like they would rip up uh, all of the uh, vegetables and put them in front of the animals. But then the, the homeowners were kind of having, getting like free labor out of the inspectors. Ultimately, they um, said that if we find uh, kilaim, if we find these uh, mixes that are not allowed, so then they make the whole field ownerless, which is a shtickle schwer. We also said, how come um, we do this on cholamoid? Because you can get a better price 
for the inspectors, it'll be cheaper since they're not working anyways. And also that is an, an indication that we're using public funds. And because we're using public funds, we have to, we have a responsibility to find the best deal and not to, um, squander public money. We then uh, saw a machlokas that we saw <laughs> on the first half of the Masechta between Rabbi Lezeb and Yaakov and the uh, Chacham, who we said is essentially Rabbi Meir, that when it comes to a base Abal, a, a field that uh, does not need to be ir- irrigated. So Rabbi Lezeb and Yaakov says that you're not allowed to irrigate it on Cholamoid, whereas um, uh, Rabbi Meir says that you are allowed to irrigate it on Cholamoid. Okay, and then at the end we talked about like hunting... Um, um, these uh, creatures that don't have eyes and killing ants and stuff like that that you can like just swap mud and put it in, like dirt and put it in the different ant holes as long as they're like a parcel away and on different sides of the river and stuff interesting stuff friends peace out